July to end of August, and then a year, year later, it's all the same. So now we are behaving in the same way than uh, 2019. Uh, and when we are doing this for the next couple of years, uh, we end up with three planets, resources of three planets, and this is not possible anymore, so we have to change something. I, I'm showing this graph, uh, this image, since in the past 10 years. Um, this uh, was on a date, I think it was 2011 or 12, when we took one and a half planets. Now we take 1.6 planets. Uh, I haven't found uh, a, new gra a new image. Uh, and the interesting thing is, we are still on the red line. Nothing happened in the big picture uh, in, the, in the past 10 years. And that's really uh, uh, interesting to see. Uh, okay, what to do? We are 8 billion people uh, on the planet right now. I think there, there was a message yesterday in the news uh, that 8 billion people is, uh, um, is born right now or was born. Uh, a similar um, news was there in the, in, the, uh, in the internet some weeks ago. So we are 8 billion more or less. Um, uh, and we have to find a way to restrict uh, climate uh, change, the, the uh, uh, heating up of the atmosphere um, up to 1.5 degrees. That was the result of the um, climate conference in Paris uh, some years ago. And the CO2 budget is, by the way, just uh, less than seven years. So when you're talking to the, uh, especially the uh, construction industry, you have to say, what can you do in the construction industry to limit climate change in seven years? So what to do? I don't know. Uh, what to do in the, in the transport sector, in the industrial sector? What to do in seven years? No one knows. But we have to do something. We have to change our, the way we live, the way we doing things, the way uh, of our industrial concept, the way we go from one point to another. We have to change completely the, the whole system of a system um, which is now a linear one from taking, making, throwing it away into a circular one where you have the two, two circles. One is the technical circle for all the materials and stuff, which is quite value because it's made from metal or from, um, from uh, materials, which takes a, a lot of energy, like ceramics, or, or from materials which are not natural, like uh, synthetic um, materials and plastics. So you have to keep them into a, in, the, in the circle. And the other circle is about natural materials. So keep the, the natural materials natural so that you can bring them back into nature. That is the, the main uh, idea of the circular economy, which is quite similar to what we had maybe 200 years ago. Um, uh, since that time, we changed a lot and we achieved a lot, but we have to uh, go back maybe or look back and transform the ideas of the past into the future. So, what to do in the, in the technological circle is um, uh, reuse, uh, refurbish and recycle. We are doing recycling since... I don't know, 30, 40 years, but it's not going that well. So to keep the materials in a way that you are using them as long as you can. We have um, some products in the exhibition, like a boat, 3D printed from uh, recycled plastics. When you have a look there, uh, we have um, a product, a wheel in the exhibition, made from recycled PET, yeah. So the PET is transformed into polyester fibers and the fibers are used in that wheel. Uh, that's a, a step into the right direction. 
So these are the, the fibers. You can uh, have a look later on. And then it's about why not to use um, just only one material when you imagine uh, what your clothes um, are made of or products, different materials for different um, um, abilities, uh, different performance. And maybe we have to think uh, about when you turn back a product into the circle, it, uh, it is the easiest way if the, the product is made from one material. So we see a lot of um, developments in that area to use mono materials. There was a, um, a project from VD with, a, with Uxler, it's a 3D printing company, to bring a, a backpack onto the market which is only, use, uh, only made from um, TPU, thermoplastic, uh, polyurethane. And we, we don't have that backpack in the exhibition. We have another one with a, um, a, a pad, the, the pad on the back, uh, which is 3D printed in the same material than the back pad is made from. Not this one, but uh, that one. So that is one way we can stimulate the, um, the circular uh, economy. And this is another example of how Oechsler is bringing 3D printed flexible pads into industry, like uh, in this Porsche seat uh, we uh, saw last year. So we tried to get that one, um, was not easy. So we, we brought, brought a, a piece of 3D printed lattice. You can sit on and try how this uh, feels and, and the 3D printed um, seat. Um, we see that material innovation is enabling um, a green uh, mobility, green energy, by the way. Uh, we have this bicycle on display uh, where the frame is 3D printed, just two, uh, two kilograms, just a frame. The whole bicycle is uh, heavier. Uh, in that case, it's just made from uh, metal, three pieces and uh, I think four, four pieces um, printed in, in metal. The idea is uh, to reduce the amount of material you use, to reduce the amount of pieces you have on the bicycle and all the, 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 the products that you bring onto the bicycle are fully uh, recyclable. That's the a project from Canyon uh, in, in Germany, quite a, an interesting company. Then uh, you've maybe heard about the Hyperloop and that we want to have Hyperloop technology also in Europe. Uh, one plan of uh, the Netherlands is to have a a demo um, um, a pilot route uh, to transport freight in the uh, first uh, step from Rotterdam to Amsterdam. Um, here is the, the, the first pilot, the plan of the first pilot route, and then they uh, want to have a, a loop um, to transport freight uh, in the first way. Uh, and to extend it to Germany and to Paris. Uh, so that's the idea. Um, very interesting. And when you uh, think of um, to bring um, humans into the Hyperloop, then you have to think of more security and um, brake system to bring a system like this from, I think, 900 uh, um, uh, kilometer per hour uh, to zero in some seconds. And uh, the ETH in Zurich developed um, a brake system. A, they call it Bello Rail Brake um, for that purpose. Uh, it's 3D printed in one piece. Uh, we have it on display um, on the back of this column <laughs> of the little pyramid. Um, it works with oil, so you bring in oil, and when you uh, when there is a difference in pressure uh, inside the brake, you you can move the pieces um, 
uh, so you, you, you move the pieces from the left to the right and then you, you um, can break uh, with, uh, the, the, with the whole system. Yeah, you move the bellow and, and then uh, uh, the, the braking pressure uh, is released. So that was a presentation they did for the 3D Pioneers Challenge and they, this project won the 3D Pioneers Challenge uh, this year. That's why we have this on display, uh, because we, we are in the jury of uh, this challenge in taking place in Erfurt, from, for, from the fair uh, rapid tech. Then it's uh, all about changing the, the energy uh, in mobility, so why not having hydrogen, for example, uh, in, um, in a car system or uh, when you think of uh, using a plane, we have uh, this electric boat over there. Um, this can also be um, powered by hydrogen. We saw the first uh, plane uh, on the Hanover Fair uh, in April um, working with hydrogen, zero emission. And with that, there's an interesting construction um, done, a design where they have the tanks for the hydrogen uh, inside uh, the wings. So we tried to get um, a tank for this show, but it was not able, so we were not successful. From these guys, then we found a company uh, from France and from Spain producing um, hydrogen tanks from uh, carbon fibers. Uh, finally, we got a piece over there, uh, a crane beam made from uh, carbon fibers just three kilogram of weight, so you can just grab it and <laughs> push it up and down uh, very easy. Uh, they, so this is from an institute, um, an aircraft institute, institute in Stuttgart. Uh, they found uh, a new way to, to bring the fibers uh, around a core. The core is made from um, cardboard, and at the end of the, uh, the process, they just wash the cardboard out. So there is no core uh, inside and quite an, a smart way to do. Looks like low-tech, probably it is, but it's a high-tech uh, material they use. Then it's uh, all about wood, especially in North Europe, in Finland, uh, um, Scandinavia, also in Germany, in Norway. Um, probably you have heard about that Stora Enzo is working on a battery system based on uh, lignin. Lignin, um, uh, uh, a waste material which you found in the paper industry. So they turn the lignin into hard carbon and then uh, use this hard carbon as an elect uh, electrode, one electrode, the anode, uh, instead of a, a graf uh, graphite uh, anode. Uh, so they are starting a pilot production in Finland. I forgot the, the name of the city. Uh, I think uh, it was Finland. Uh, and this is uh, very, very interesting to see that wood is becoming so uh, important in, in, uh, uh, in the industry uh, right now. Um, so, especially in the biological circle, remember the, the, the image of the circular economy where you have the technological and the bi biological circle. A lot, uh, of, um, uh, a lot is taking place in the uh, biological circle. Very, very interesting uh, material innovation. So, we, had, uh, we have on display a piece of that uh, tur uh, wind turbine towers. The, the CEO was around, he brought the piece. It's just lying uh, over there, uh, which is made from, from wood. Um, this company, Motvion, is from Gothenburg. And they say they can reduce the uh, amount of, the pr first of all, the price and the, uh, the, the emissions to produce the tower um, by 90%. And when you um, 
think of the, uh, a way to uh, get carbon with the, uh, with, the wind, uh, with the energy from wind, you get carbon out of the atmosphere and bring it back into a material, then it's, uh, uh, at the end it's, um, uh, uh, it's carbon uh, neutral or carbon um, negative. And that's very, very, very interesting uh, now. We see a lot of developments um, uh, where they try not to mix um, different materials, like what you have in the, um, the particle board industry, where you mix wooden fibers with um, duroplastic, um, uh, 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 duroplastic materials, uh, so plastic with uh, wooden fibers. Uh, we see a, a lot of uh, developments now um, thinking of where is the binding component coming from. We found um, a company called uh, Onex. This is a startup uh, company from the um, University uh, of Barcelona. I think it was uh, ECAD or something. Uh, we found them because they use an, uh, they call it enzyme treatment. They use the the pulp material, which is the waste material of the, in the paper industry, uh, where the fibers are too uh, small to make paper from, but they are actually not too small to make a board from. The board is lying over there, just behind you. <laughs> we have two pieces. This board is made just from wood, and enzymes bring a binding quality in between the fibers so that it is 100% returnable into, um, uh, into nature. And they use these boards for interior purpose, something. So probably that's one of the best uh, we found. Then we found uh, another piece from uh, Göteborg called Paper Shell. It's on the white column um, just left over there. Um, this is made 100% from cellulose. Uh, with um, similar um, properties or same properties like you find uh, in the plastic industry, but completely plastic free uh, and with all the qualities you are going, going to have or you need to use it, for example, in the interior of a car. So the Polestar, by the way, um, the new one, uh, which is going to build, I think, in, up in, they started in 2025, will use that material in the interior of the car. Um, then uh, we find a lot of interesting stuff about interior uh, materials for the car industry, where, where you normally use synthetic leather. So... Um, we found a company called uh, Natural Fiber Welding in the U.S. Uh, they uh, uh, found uh, find a way to produce um, completely plastic-free leather alternative made from coconut fibers, from natural rubber, um, rice hulls, and um, cork powder. It's on the uh, on display over there. Um, the, the shoe is made from that material, uh, but also you can uh, have a foam, exactly that material. The foam is 100% plastic free, 100% natural, the material. So you can produce a shoe with leather, which is biodegradable, but also the sole uh, could be produced from that material. So a 100% biodegradable uh, shoe which is normally made from plastic. Look what you have on your feet. So and, um, probably it's also uh, possible to use it in the in car interior, in the wall uh, um, of, a, uh, of a door, and that was presented in Stuttgart. And they also find a way to um, create uh, or transform um, cotton fibers into 
into fibers that have similar qualities like plastic, um, because normally you, you know that, um, that cotton uh, is taking uh, humidity from, uh, from the air, and when it's wet, it's, uh, uh, it's heavy and not so uh, well to, to, to wear. Um, so it's maybe better for these circumstances to, to wear uh, synthetic uh, fiber materials like you uh, do in sports. And they found a way to, um, to weld the natural fibers on a molecular structure in a way that they become uh, a, a fiber which is similar to plastic, but it's not plastic, it's biodegradable. And yeah, that's the one we put on display, the, the white uh, cotton-like uh, textile over there. So that is a very, very interesting uh, innovation uh, taking place. And we are going to have a guy from this company uh, having a presentation here uh, on Thursday afternoon. We have uh, also found a, a, another development from the US, a company called Butcha Bio, a way to uh, produce, um, yeah, that's also a foam-like material from, uh, from bacteria, from mushroom. Um, it's, uh, it lie down over there, the uh, black, uh, sample. It's 100% um, biodegradable, 100% bio-based. Uh, you, can, you can feel um, the, uh, the quality uh, and it grows from kombucha. It's a... Um, um, ah, a mushroom. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly that one. So you, you know the, the kombucha, the, the, the drink and the, the mushroom swims um, on top of it, and they found a, a, a way to bring that into, into an industrial uh, production and um, have a manufacturing process uh, for this type of materials. And maybe that is the best piece uh, we have on display. It's, uh, it's over there. It's a small 10 by 10 um, uh, piece of foam. It looks like an industrial produced uh, foam, but it's 100% made from mushroom. 100% biodegradable, exactly the, the piece you're standing uh, in front of, exactly that one. When you, um, uh, you uh, uh, they also have um, um, a leather-like um, mushroom piece for uh, alternative clothing uh, on display uh, as well. Now I have to look on the time. Five minutes left. Um, yeah, two materials I would like to present to you. Um, one material is made from rattan. It's a plant you find in, uh, um, in Indonesia, for example. Um, a German company uh, found a way to bring rattan in an industrial process uh, into industry. We have um, car um, parts for car interior, uh, and we have a uh, conductive um, piece over there. You, you probably know that um, uh, water is um, transport uh, in uh, the tropes in, in the plants via uh, little dots and they cut the material uh, in this way and bring the, the little uh, sheets together to, um, to have a thicker part and then they bring graphene inside to make it uh, conductive. Uh, so on the one hand it's translucent to, um, to light, and on the other hand, it's conductive. So you can try the, the piece. Yeah, that is, that's uh, a heating system. Uh, and the, the other piece is uh, in front of the, the, the table uh, over there. You can just try the finger on the switch and um, the hand, and then you see the light. Ah, so they, 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 have, they, bring, they brought a, a, a sensor system 
into the material uh, with only um, graphene. Um, so it's 100% biodegradable, 100% uh, plastic-free um, solution. You can try if you want. And then we have, uh, so that's the last material, we have uh, on display uh, capacitors, sensors, uh, a battery uh, made from paper, uh, glycerin, and also um, uh, carbon inside, 100% um, um, biodegradable. They've tested it. So these two guys from EMPA will be on display uh, also um, tomorrow. It's exactly what you can see there. Uh, the idea is to have uh, electronic parts, sensors, batteries on paper, um, uh, on disposal um, products and packages. Um, so they test the, the, the material. Yeah, that was the last one. Thank you for listening to me. That was like a, a walking tour around the exhibition. And um, we are going to have another presentation, I think in two minutes, starting um, a digital uh, one um, from a company. Um, is he online? Not yet. Not yet. Uh-huh. So you you know you know how to work with that. I Good morning. So, so now, uh, Kai Markus Wolf from CSI um, in Germany is talking to you, um, presenting a, a process chain for having ultra lightweight uh, uh, seats, for example, components for the car interior. And uh, we are very much interested in uh, listening to you, Kai. So you can start. Can you hear me? Yeah, no problem. Should I? Yeah, should, should I should I directly start or? Yeah, you can start directly. Okay, then I share my presentation and then I can start. Okay, you can hear me. Okay, perfectly. Then uh, I would start. Okay, then, uh, hello everybody. Um, yeah, I would like to welcome you all at the Elmia Subcontractor today. Um, my name is Kai Markus Wolf and I'm the project leader of the NAMICO, um, yeah, the, the part of uh, CSI Entwicklungstechnik, the part I would like to show you today. Um, in the next few minutes, I can explain uh, the current status of the digital process chain to you. My focus here is also clearly on sustainability because the digital process chain is a wonderful example how you can combine different aspects of sustainability, such as ultra lightweight construction paired with sustainable materials. I would like to do this by showing you the path uh, that the digital process chain has taken from the ultra lightweight siege uh, through the armrest to the NAMICO. But let's start with why we're doing this and clarify a few general issues. 
The Earth Overshoot Day in annual campaign by the Global Footprint Network organization is the day of the current year when human demand for renewable resources exceeds supply and the Earth capacity to reproduce those resources for that year. As you can see, the Earth Overshoot Day has come earlier and earlier in the recent years. If it was still December the 7th in 1970, in 2021, we will have reached the day on July the 7th. Of course, there are also a few po positive impacts in history, such as in 2022. We all still remember the pictures from Venice where the bo boats sailed on clear water in the ca canals, which were always very turbid uh, up to now. Dolphins have also not been seen in the, uh, in the bay for a long time. But this was all due to the pandemic, and in 2021, we are back to the level before Corona. For Germany, the Earth Overshoot Day was on May the 4th this year. From that day on, we lived in Germany beyond our means. So the Earth was not able to reproduce our resources, what we uh, used from um, May the 4th this year. Global warming is also an important factor. With such tools as the digital process chain, we can decide which side of the future we want to be on. And I don't think it's difficult to choose when you look at this uh, these two ways. I would like to live on the right side. Sustainability means business success. I don't think I need to go into more detail about the magic triangle of the sustainability during my presentation. Um, yeah, we, uh, we all can uh, imagine what happens there. On the right side, we have the material energy consumption and CO2 emissions like mass or material processing and CO2 footprint. On the left side, we have the natural resource use, so material availability, water management, waste management, and at the bottom part, technology parameters, so the industrialization of the whole thing. These three factors are, yeah, for our magic sustainability triangle important. But let's start with some basics. On the basics, uh, here is the, or one of the basics here is the XFK and 3D technology, which was and is being promoted by the company AMC. There are already many advantages here, which are very important for sustainability, such as the almost waste-free production or the ultra lightweight principle. We have uh, here in XFK and 3D, no waste of material, as already said. We have an attractive string art design. Um, we have a versatile process, so we can uh, really go on every um, yeah, new uh, product or we can do it nearly wherever we want to have it built uh, for uh, yeah, substructure parts or, uh, or we can use it for visible parts, as you will see in the Namico. But however, one of the essential points in XFK 3D is the digital process chain. And that is one of the core competences of CSE and Wicklungstechnik. The digital process chain is one of our core competences and um, front loading is an important term here. We start by recording the load spectrum and the load path, which are then displayed in a previously created installation space model from which we obtain the topology optimization. Based on this topology optimization, we can now develop our design of the component and create the first winding plans on it. This design model is now checked and optimized in the calculation and simulation until these results match the desired values. Of course, tool development is also an important point. This also takes place digitally in order to save as many resources as possible. At the very end, we only build our prototype, which however already corresponds to 95% with the optimal series component. As you can see, the digital process chain is in, uh, indispensable when it comes to saving resources and uh, thanks to the refinement of the individual, uh, individual process steps is now realistic and reproducible. Here's an example how the digital process chain can be further developed. This is a CSE tool developed by a colleague of mine, and this tool can create an optimized winding plan fully automatical, uh, automatically using only the three-dimensional coordinates in the space. And it's searching for itself the shortest and easiest way to wind our part. 
Here is the, uh, the part is a um, space frame for a car at the moment. But enough of the general part. Let's come to the ultra lightweight seat, also known as ULBS. Now that you're all probably familiar with the ULBS, I hope so, uh, here are just a few quick facts about it. Uh, the ULBS was created by CSE in, uh, CSE in 2019 and uh, was built by a colleague of mine. The ULBS has been wrapped in an ultra lightweight construction. It is a proof of concept, but really only a proof of concept. It was not built for any car or um, or any, uh, anything else. It was a standalone uh, demonstrator to see how XFK and 3D could work. Due to the very short development time, the ULBS was still hand wound and a well known material carbon was used. The result is still impressive when you look at the total weight of around 10 kilogram. So it was not really heavy and uh, for the development uh, um, time at 2019, it was, I think, nearly about 20% lighter than every seat uh, that was on the market. But how does this ULBS fit into our magic sustainability triangle? As we can see, this consists of the three topic of material or energy consumption and CO2 emissions, use of natural resources and the technology parameters or industrialization. With the ULBS, we have at least earned a green tick for the economical use of the material thanks to the ultra lightweight construction saving material here. With the armrest, we have already gone one step further, but let's start at the beginning of the two month development period. As we have already heard in theory, we have also started recording the load spectrum for the armrest. The first consideration was which load case we need to define. For this, we came to the result of two load cases. Load case one on the left describes the static condition when the rider of the racing bike is lying with his arms in the receiving shells. And load case two on the right hand side then again shows the process of placing, uh, placing the bike in the receiving shells. When the driver holds on to his handlebars before his arm slides into the shells. For this, we have assumed realistic measurements and weight as the average weight of an ordinary triathlete is around, I would say, perhaps a 70 kilogram. In the next steps, we created an installation space model based on the concept sketches that we received from our semi-professional triathletes. With the help of this load and the installation space model, the simulation gave us the topology model for the base plate and the armrest shells, which you can see on the right hand side. You can see uh, that um, from our assembly space model here, we have only given a few lines, a few paths, which are really interesting for us uh, for taking on the load and the forces. The design of our armrest is very familiar to the topology model you saw on the previous page. With the design model, we also created the first winding plan and gave it to our supplier for approval. After a few small optimizations, we were then able to submit our design model for calculation and simulation. And here in these two pictures, you can see um, at the animations, the shifts in our calculation model are, uh, are not large. We have a maximum displacement of about 1.5 millimeter for the first load case and 11 millimeter for the second load case, what is not really uh, a lot of a uh, lot displacement. After the calculation in a simplified beam model also met our requirements, we were able to start the production. Uh, the tooling was uh, done or was took over by our supplier for this and ended up um, giving us the great final product. Compared to solutions currently available on the market, we have saved an incredible 60% uh, in weight with the help of XF, uh, with the help of XFK and 3D technology. The armrest weighs 66 grams, while the structure, including the sockets, weighs only 51 grams. So that's not really, uh, yeah, that's not really much. Um, when you take a look at the market at the moment, um, possible solutions for carbon weigh about, I would say. Um, 200 grams, our uh, triathletes uh, told us. With a safe factor of two, we have achieved a maximum load capacity of 140 kilogram there. We also used sustainable materials for the armrest. Here, 
basalt was um, used as the fiber of, uh, for wrapping and 100% organic cork mat was used. Only the bushings, what you can see uh, at the bottom view, are done by 3D printing. There we can use also sustainable materials for that so that we have a 100% sustainable product at the end. At the end of the uh, at the end of the armrest, let's take uh, let's look again at our sustainable triangle. Compared to the ULBS, we have not only fulfilled the point of material use, but also the point of natural material use. Thus, oh, two out of three corners of sustainable are already fulfilled, so only one is left. So, however, the aim of the Namico project is to fulfill the last aspect to fulfill the industrial part aspect. As you will see at the beginning, the first steps of the center console are the same as those of the armrest. Um, let's, exp uh, let's explain at the, at the beginning yeah, a few points of um, the Namico. The uh, name Namico came from a uh, nachhaltige Mittelkonsole. It means, it, it's, it's German, it means uh, sustainable center console. The beginning starts here as well with an um, yeah construction space model what that was uh, created and the whole thing was created with the help of the Altair company. In addition, Altair has also taken over the creation of the topology model with the help of BM, BMW, uh, BMW M GM, uh, um, group, the BMW M group. It's our associated partner at the Namico project and we uh, had a real car to build this center console for. Based on this topology model and the current installation space in a BMW M4, our design department at CSE has started to create initial design ideas. As you can see in the picture, the topology model, which can be seen in blue in the background, served as the base, uh, basis for this design. There were, of course, more ideas for the design. I brought the two most pregnant, uh, the two most impressive with me today. After the project team, consisting of uh, our project partners AMC, DITF, um, CSE, and the BMW M Group, decided on a design. This was then worked out in more detail, and this rendering was created. Together, we discussed a few more ideas and came up with the following design for our design demonstrator, which um, yeah, which should be seen at you at the fair today. But um, our first demonstrator is at the moment um, yeah, assembled to the BMW M4 prototype. And the second demonstrator was not uh, really finished um, yeah, for the fair. I'm very sorry for that. Here, too, one of the most important core competences of CSE comes into the play, namely the 3D implementation in the well-known design program CATIA. Our development department was faced with the challenge of integrating the center, uh, central console element from BMW with the gear selector and the electronics into the design as no quickly implementable idea could be implemented in the last six months. This is just the current status of our design demonstrator, as it should normally be at your fair today. You have already uh, seen, um, yeah, perhaps the future vision of our Namico. Um, yeah, and we are going to have, I think, two more years at this project. And it's a funded project uh, at the, from the German government, so there is enough time to develop it uh, to perhaps a more detailed and good-looking status. The next step was the calculation of the XFK support structure. A weight of approximately 80 kilogram in the minus Z direction and 20 kilogram in the Y direction was assumed here if a passenger supports himself a little on the center console when getting out, for example, because the BMW M4 is a really low car, so it's uh, quite a little bit um, different for um, yeah, people to get out of this car. The whole thing was calculated according to the rigid body myth, uh, method, which is completely sufficient for the first shot of the simulation. Here too, the calculation results were outstanding for the first shot of the design and the layout of the supporting structure 
We currently have a maximum displacement of approximately 3.7 millimeters in the Y direction and 0.4 millimeter in the, in the Z direction. For the Z direction, we have assumed the load case that uh, perhaps now, um, I think on Sunday, the, um, the World Championship in uh, football will start and uh, some guy will stand on the center console and is looking on uh, out of the roof window of his BMW M4. For that, we have the 80 kilograms in the minus Z direction. After all these process steps, we decided to build a design uh, demonstrator so that you can see um, the whole thing in hardware and not just really virtual imagination is necessary. This demonstrator will not be subjected to any tests as this would uh, con contradict the digital process chain. It is purely for the purpose of better communicating the design in order to be able to understand it in hardware and to, yeah, to get a little bit more feeling of this whole product. But why exactly is the Namico now a step forward in the development of the digital process chain compared to the ULBS? On the one hand, we have a sustainable material here. Instead of carbon fiber, as in, uh, as in the ULBS, we use rayon fiber and bio-based resin here. In addition, the center console is intended for a real vehicle, um, for, uh, sorry, for a real vehicle, uh, whereas the seat was only a standalone proof of concept here. Also, all components will be integrated into the digital process chain within the next uh, two years of the project, not just the XFK and 3D structure. Industrialization is also an important point. If the ULBS is still hand-winded, the Namico will be fully automated, uh, automated robot-winded. The tool design and layout will also um, move more into the focus at the digital process chain, not least because, uh, not at least because of the consolidated XFK 3D structure. That's another difference between the ULBS and uh, the Namico that we have it here consolidated the XFK and 3D structure because of this consolidated structure, we can use it in the automotive interior. So let's take a look at our triangle again and tick off the points that are achieved with the Namico. With the XFK 3D um, structure and the other lightweight construction technologies used, we have reached the point of using materials. The use of rayon fiber, uh, fiber bio-based resins and the material from BComp company means that the aspect of sustainable and natural resources is also taken care of. With the development of fully automated winding, winding and the consolidation of the supporting structure, an important part of the technology parameters and industrialization can also be regarded as completed. As you can see, the Namico fulfills all aspects of the sustainability triangle. But let's uh, take a look, since we still have two years of development ahead of us and are far, for, uh, far from having reached the end of our possibilities, we should also take a look what, uh, at what it's, is on uh, our to-do list for the Namico in the near future. As previously mentioned, it will still be a challenge to let the Namico wrap fully automatically, uh, automatically in combination with the consolidation of the supporting structure. The digital process chain is supplemented by the remaining components, such as the center armrest, the covers and the smart textiles. The already refined calculation must now also be used. We will analyze the fibers on a single strand level and also the not analyzes analysis at the turning points needs to be considered more deeply. Consolidation is also an important part of this calculation, of course. After the overall project is named Namico Smart, the smart textiles must be integrated into the overall center console system in the future. Yeah, and I'm already looking forward to presenting the final result of the Namico project to all of you in two years, I hope so. And as I'm uh, convinced that with my uh, with this project, we will be taking a big and important step in the area of sustainable and future automotive development. I would like to thank you for the invitation to the Elmia Subcontractor Fair for the opportunity to bring the digital process chain a little uh, bit closer to you. Thank you at the same time for your intention and I hope you enjoyed today's day at the Elmia Subcontractor. Thank you very much.